each of the candidates is, is going to have two minutes, and in, 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 in order to make sure that they keep to their two minutes, I've got Finn McGrath sitting here in front with his little bell, and Finn will ring his bell when the time is up. So, Maria Bailey for Finn again. Uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for having us here this morning, and I'm delighted to be back. Um, areas of keen interest to myself are affordability in housing, the creation of opportunity of jobs, uh, college education, and small to medium enterprise, along with many other um, areas. Um, I look forward to the engagement of questions later on, and thank you again for this morning. It's the People Before Profit and Anti-Austerity Alliance. Richard Boyd Barrett. The vision of People Before Profit is, is about change coming from below, uh, not from above. So whether it's the need to uh, have proper investment in education, in affordable housing, uh, to have a health service that works uh, and doesn't leave people lying on trolleys, uh, it's people power that brings change. And that's really what People Before Profit is about. It's about people power to bring fairness and equality to our society. And our next speaker is Frank Cronin of Renewa. We at Renew Ireland want to actually make a, a university education that's worthwhile and fit for you and ready for you when you, when you actually go to, educate, go to third level. We also want to develop business for you, and like business in the community and business right around the country. Because we want to actually create the, the, the taxation and environment for entrepreneurs and business to be ready to take the good people like you to, into work. We also want to end the cronyism of Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael. We want to actually have honest politics, we want integrity at the centre of it, and we want actually to you to be proud of your politicians. So I look forward to your vote. Thank you. Our next speaker is Cormac Devlin of Fianna Fáil. It's at times like this when politicians come calling uh, that you are most powerful in the sense that you can raise issues uh, that are very important. And so for me, a number of issues, I'm chair of the Environmental and Climate Change, Energy and Climate Change SPC. It's a st strategic policy committee in the council. And that's a very uh, important issue for me. And I think that's an important issue for all of us going forward. Our next speaker is uh, Mary Hannafin of Fianna Fáil. The next few years are going to be about shaping the type of society we live in. And it's about seeing, are we looking after our older people? What about people with disabilities who can't get respite care? What about families who are paying a second mortgage for childcare? Uh, what about, as I said, the, the whole education system? And what about the fact that there are 1,600 children who are in emergency accommodation because they're homeless? That has always been my passion, and that's why I'm running again in this election. Thank you, gentlemen. Our next speaker is Carol Hunt, and Carol's an independent that belongs to the Independent Alliance. At the moment, we only have 16% women in Dáil and that is the highest we have ever had in this country. Now, could you imagine if, from the foundation of the state, that women had been in massive majority in Dáil Éireann, if the highest number that men ever achieved was 16%, there would be riots on the street. You would down tools, and you would be right to do so. I've seen um, politicians argue deliberately about issues they actually agree on, again, because they're doing what's in the party's interest, and I think that has to change. So that's why I'm running as an independent. Thank you. And our next speaker is Mary Mitchell O'Connor of Fine Gael. What I would say to you lads, this is a really important election for all of this age group. And one of the reasons is that many of you are doing your leave inserts, you're in fifth year, and you'll be going to college, and you'll be coming out in five years' time at the end, hopefully, of the, this five-year government term. And it will be really important to you, can you get a job? So it's really important that we put in a government that's stable, that will last the course, and that will be able to create jobs. Our next speaker is Shane O'Brien of Sinn Féin. This Friday, you actually have the power to change the course of Irish history. You have the power to break from the past, to break from the stranglehold and the domination that Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil have had over our country and our, and our society. You have a chance to elect a progressive for a government for the first time in the history of the state. You have a chance to elect a government that's going to put citizens' rights first, that's going to actually care, put people's needs first, above that of big business and multinationals. Our next speaker is Carrie Smith from the Labour Party. We've 
we've got the economy back on track, we've increased the minimum wage twice, we've had a very successful equality referendum, we've legislated for the X case and I hope that you will give us an opportunity to get back into government and to continue to um, fix some of the things that are broken such as um, education and housing and we need to have a referendum to appeal the Eighth Amendment. So I ask you to vote for me on Friday so that we can all live in a more just, caring and equal society. Thanks very much. Our next and last speaker is Oisín Smith of the Green Party. My main memory of, uh, of being your age, and I remember it very clearly, is of being really, really bored all the time and also of feeling really powerless. We could have public transport that works like any other city. You know, we could have families living in the city centre. We could have exciting districts to live in instead of boring districts and we could give more independence to young people. And so I decided to go into politics. I ran for election two years ago for the Green Party and nobody expected me to win a seat, but I did. Here I am running for the general election and I'd really appreciate it if you vote for me this Friday. Thank you very much. Connor's question, what is you or your party's plan for third level uh, in Ireland and what, if any, effects do you think this will have on secondary education? What we are saying in Fine Gael is that we're trying to wider the opportunity in higher education and provide additional courses where there's flexibility and quality of courses. And what we are doing is looking at the environments where we can provide student accommodation throughout the country and in particular what we're looking at is in Dunleary Town where we can provide student accommodation at an affordable price. People before profit are for the complete abolition of uh, registration fees. We're against any introduction of uh, tuition fees. We also think the grants need to be improved uh, because student poverty is a, a major problem uh, and we need serious investment in uh, student accommodation. We also need more uh, investment in just having more lecturers. Uh, class sizes and much of third level are getting too big uh, and there's not enough staff. Our 40% of the costs of the best universities in the world are funded by, by companies. We want to actually encourage companies to do the same in Ireland. And we want, we want good quality education funded by, by the state but also by, by the business that benefits from them. We propose that there is um, 15 million invested in improving the quality of education in, so that students aren't affected by the extra um, number of students um, att attending third level. We also, um, in 2017, will reduce the student contribution by 500 euros. Equally in terms of investment in our universities, but for those who aren't going to university for further education uh, and the FE sector itself, uh, to, fur to invest in those um, in institutions and obviously to um, recruit more uh, lectures and uh, have more admin staff in all those colleges. Do you think it is fair for our generation to be made to suffer from financial decisions made over the past two decades? What do you propose to lessen this burden on us? What has happened in this country is wrong. I'm married right, the past is in the past, we can only move forward. But we need to see uh, a recognition from the European Union, from the ECB, that the Ar Irish people have paid too much. The European Central Bank and the ESM need to recapitalise Irish banks so the banks can give back what we've put in. That, that would be fair, because what has happened is not fair. Can you maintain a high quality education system? Can you ensure that the people get a family home? Because uh, once you have a family home, then you are starting to be rooted within your community and can start raising a family uh, and go going to work and getting work. And then continuing to support at two different levels. One, the small medium sized enterprises. Uh, and the self-employed people who are at the backbone of the economy and who need to get greater support and greater incentives and, and secondly, uh, the major internationals need to be encouraged to continue to come here. It is absolutely horrific what has been done to you and it is theft on a major scale. This is not capitalism, this is socialisation of debt. Bankers and bondholders' debt. So if I can say anything to you, I would say please, you need to get out and protest against the continual payments of these debts, which you did not incur, which the Irish people did not incur, which are private debts. Um, and if you don't, you will be paying them for the rest of your lives. There was 150,000, 140,000 jobs created in the worst recession in this country. And we can continue to do it. Now, there's no point keep stating the obvious, none whatsoever. We all know the country went down the tubes, went down the toilet, but we all have to work together. You know, if you go in to take a new job in the public service, for example, if you go in as a new teacher, you'll be earning 40% less than the other teachers who are there who are just, you know, similar level of experience to you. And that's wrong to set up two salary scales. 
What, what's been done has been wrong and it needs to be rectified now. There are different levels of welfare for people in their 20s or people in their 30s. And as a result, large quantities of people are emigrating from Ireland in their 20s. We're losing a whole generation of people and we need to make things more reasonable and more fair towards younger people. Thank you. I think one of the important things that happened was that you decided to put a limit on how long answers can be. Because I can tell you, politicians yeah. can talk for God. They will go on forever. And uh, I think that made them just succinct in what they had to say. Um, but I think it was important for them as well to remember that there are a whole range, or a whole crew of 18-year-olds who will vote for the first time in this election, and that they are looking forward to maybe a very different Ireland than people of my generation went through. In a way, we were the lucky generation. You know, things fell right for us. We're the ones that have paid off our houses. We're the ones who got to university and whatever. Um, but there is a generation going forward carrying a debt that was probably created by us. And they have every right to feel unfair, and they have every right to ask politicians why they should bear this debt and what they're going to do about it.